Welcome back everybody. Super quick video this time as I'm actually running low on battery. Um, this one is going to be a super quick upgrade of an IBM X3650 Model 4. We have two new CPUs here. These are the Intel Xeon E52643s, 3.3 GHz CPUs. Um, unfortunately, the server I want to put them in only has uh, one heatsink and is missing fans, so we can only put one of them in for the time being. Um, so that'll be for a future video to put the second one in. Um, these were 15 quid for the pair and uh, I can see why they were 15 quid because uh, if we have a look on the bottom of these yeah they've got thermal paste all over them so we have some uh, some contact clean here that we're going to go over them with and get them into the new server so if we jump over to the rack here and take a look at the server that it's going in this here is a production model of the IBM X3650 Model 4 unlike my prototypes this one has a working power button and a full pop-out light path diagnostics. Very neat indeed. Um, this thing is equipped with two 120 gigabyte SSDs, I believe. Um, so that's just for boot OS. Um, if you know my servers well, you know that I run everything off iSCSI storage. You know, forget having 16 drives in a server. Let's just consolidate it down and keep our power usage as low as we can. So let's pull this server out and get these CPUs or one CPU upgraded. For this server, as you can see, we only have one PCIe riser. We have a dual 10 gig NIC in there for SFP. Uh, we are missing the second riser and it actually has a bit of dust in there. So we'll clean that out. Um, this is a pretty bog standard base model X3650 Model 4. A bit sad that it only has one, one processor in it. And it's missing the second heatsink because I definitely don't have another heatsink that small. Um, but let's jump right into it. By the looks of things, we actually have... So we have 16 gigs of memory in this thing. Not too shabby. Uh, now, IBM actually make taking CPUs out of these things really easy. You just push one little lever down and then you normally push it to the side. But there we go. I thought it went the other way. And that cooler popped straight off. And that there is the stock thermal paste, which as you can see, yeah, that CPU will probably have been running very hot. Uh, the one that's currently in here is only an E5-2620. Um, so they are six core, 12 thread processors running at two gigahertz, capable of up to 2.4 turbo. Um, nothing very fancy, but the ones that we're gonna be putting it in are four core, eight threads. However, those things can go up to 3.3 and I believe it's equal to 3.5 or 3.8 turbo. So, without further ado, let's just get our thermal paste off this guy and off the heatsink, which, look at that, it just comes straight off. It's not the worst thermal paste I've ever seen, especially considering that's probably stock and been on there for probably, well, since 2014. Um, I'm going to get that cleaned up and then we will put the new CPU in. Check that out. This heat sink actually cleaned up really well. There's a slight little bit of residue that you can see, but to the eye, the visible eye, you can't actually see that. So that's pretty neat. Let's get our CPU out here. Um, it doesn't say which one we have to pull out first. So, uh, okay, it's not that one. It is this one. Or maybe not, it is this one. That's a horrible spring-loaded system there by the looks of things. Um, there we go, there is our original CPU, and you can tell it's an IBM one because it still has the sticker on it. Uh, how exactly? There we go, we'll grab them that way. Amazing, look at all those pins there, 2011. So here is our old CPU, um, absolutely perfect condition. I'm actually going to leave that upside down. I'm just going to grab a new CPU here. Um, this one, I think I'm going to go with this one just because it has no thermal paste on the bottom. There is a slight mark on the side there. But you know what? I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Um, and then we're just going to line up those notches. Pop that down there. I'm going to close the socket. Um, which wants this side down first. And then that side down. We're going to grab some MX4. Absolutely disgusting. Um presentation of that thermal paste there check that out that has been applied dreadfully and that is just how we roll around here so let's get our heat sink on which is apparently capable of this processor um let's pop that on there and then 
that is in theory all we need to do. This processor is now ready to go. So let's pop our heatsink back on. God, the lid is probably the heaviest bit of this server. If I can get it to line up correctly. I'm going to do that properly, I think. <laughs> Awesome, that is that. Let's grab ourselves a quick VGA cable. A quick Ethernet, not Ethernet. VGA cable, not VGA, USB. I actually do have USBs on that, there we go. And let's grab a quick power supply plug. Let's see if this thing boots. Got like 30% battery left, which is why I'm rushing this a hell of a lot faster than normal. And that was a very quick response time from that. This server should say fairly quiet, I think. System initializing. That's a good sign so far. So because of the vibration coming from the server, you'll see that shaking is not your monitor, it is the iPhone. It cannot handle it. But you know what? We are running and we are running well. Check that out. Nice. 3.3 gigahertz, we've got 16 gigs of RAM running at 1333. We've got a lovely little SSD chugging away. Let's get an ethernet cable. Now these things actually feel lightning fast when you have uh, high clock processors compared to like the lower two gigahertz ones. Uh, let's just make sure that it's still loading. It is. Um, right, so I'm reckoning we're gonna be around, probably around the i7-2700K range, maybe a little less. Five, six, seven, wow, really not amazing. Let's check our power profile. High performance, wow, okay, so that really was the best it could perform. So if we double that, if we're thinking two processors instead of one, um, we're probably looking at what, maybe 1100-ish range, which would be more where I expect it to be around the X5650s. Um, currently our dual E5 2620s score 1160, so yeah, two times faster than this. But you know what, to say these things were 15 quid, so this one's essentially £7.50. I'd say that's not too bad. It's definitely usable. Um, it beats an i5-6500. That's acceptable by me. Um, and it loads up things fairly quickly too. So you know what? Not too shabby. Let's get this thing put away.